Shalom, and welcome to yet another episode in our ongoing series called Faith Journeys with God in the Land. Today we're going to be talking about the crossing of the Ark of the Covenant across the Jordan River, as mentioned in the book of Joshua. Welcome to this episode where we are going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant crossing the Jordan River. And you can see that I'm in my office today. Uh, So far, we've done a couple of these episodes from my office. Here's my trusty microphone. And of course, I hope you've enjoyed some of the on-site devotionals that I have been taking over the course of my last Israel trip. That's primarily going to be the the gist of this new series called Faith Journeys with God in the Land. But I'm back home, and uh, I wanted to make uh, at least a few recordings, including this one, uh, from my desk. So what we are needing in this episode is my trusty topography map. There it is. And uh, a book. And I'll share a few words from the book later. But here's the context to uh, Joshua chapter 3 and 4. And uh, we talk about Moses at the end of his life. He is leading his people not directly up into the promised land through the Negev, the southern highlands. But uh, he's leading his people now on the east side of this rift valley. And he's uh, sort of skirting by the Edomites. Edom. Petra, by the way, is down here. Uh, The Moabites, and eventually also on the east side of the Dead Sea, the Ammonites. And Moses is right here on Mount Nebo, just at the very northeast side of the Dead Sea. Here's the Dead Sea. Uh, This northern part of the Dead Sea is about 35 miles in length and about 900 feet deep. But here is Moses. He's about 120 now, and he's ready to pass the baton of leadership to a guy named Joshua. And that's exactly what happened. Now, the Israelites are in the plains of Moab, probably down off uh, this ridge here that we see. And Moses goes up to Mount Nebo, and uh, he views into the promised land. In fact, from Mount Nebo, you can see a great distance, especially if it's clear. Most of the time it's a little hazy, but that's what happened. Moses then dies and Joshua takes over. So when we talk about uh, Joshua and the crossing of uh, the Ark of the Covenant, now as the whole Israelite army would cross into uh, this land of Canaan marked by Jericho, which is also uh, just to the north but west of the tip of the Dead Sea. Uh, Jericho and I and 29 other cities eventually, according to Joshua 12, would be taken. So uh, a great invasion was about to take place and how uh, the crossing took place of the Israelites is really a remarkable story. So as Joshua tells us, uh, the water was backed up all the way about 17 miles to a place called Adam. Now, if you're looking at where my where my finger is, there's Jericho, and here is uh, right across from Jericho, and 17 miles north is Adam. Now, the distance between the Dead Sea, the northern tip, and the southern end of the Sea of Galilee is about 65 miles. So, approximately a third of the way up, God again performs another miracle the display of his power and greatness and the water backs up as far as adam and they cross the river jordan now this is a really an incredible story because 
uh, who should lead the crossing other than the priests. And, of course, the Ark of the Covenant would also go on ahead of the rest of the people. Now, I want you to uh, picture this. Uh, here you are on the east side of the Jordan River. And according to Joshua 6, after, of course, they cross and they take the city of Jericho, as recorded in Joshua 6, uh, the water is at flood stage. According to the Palestinian Exploration Fund, the PEF, uh, back over 100 years ago, uh, they tell us that the river at flood stage could be as wide as two or 200 or 250 feet and the water about 10 feet at least or deeper. Now today, the River Jordan is used by not only the, the Jordanians, but also the Israelis, primarily the Jordanians based on the peace agreement uh, struck with the Israelis. The water, of course, flows, let me get my map out again, flows out of the Sea of Galilee, but really it's so well used that it really never makes it into the Dead Sea anymore. But uh, we have uh, really uh, some historical examples of how wide the river actually was at flood stage. So could you imagine now uh, dipping your toe into the river at flood stage? It's raging. It's probably brown and muddy. And uh, you need to trust God for this crossing. This is why I perhaps have called this chapter in my book that we'll read from just in a moment, uh, Faith Crossings. And really it's a remarkable uh, example of how uh, the priests now, in with the Ark of the Covenant leading the way, they cross over the river. So once they do, uh, again, the river uh, backs up about 17 miles all the way to Adam, and they cross on dry ground. And once they cross to the west side of the river, they get 12 stones from the middle of the river and they make a monument on the west side as a memorial, as a marking, if you will. This was pretty common back in the days of the ancient Near East, by the way, and other cultures. Uh, and uh, this was made so that the Israelites would remember this display of God's greatness and goodness. So let me read a couple words from uh, my book. In fact, uh, we're using this book in this devotional series. You may want to get your own copy. Uh, we sell it in our store on our website, and also you can get it on Amazon as well. It's called Connecting the Dots Between uh, the Bible and the Land of Israel. And I want to read portions of this just to uh, sort of capture uh, the right words that I wrote and uh, this narrative of the crossing. Because really when we talk about our own faith crossing, in, in, in our lives, uh, we, we really need to step out in faith, just like the priest did with the Ark of the Covenant. So here is how, again, I phrased it in this heading, connecting to our faith journey. First steps that initiate a new direction or new commitment in life are hard to take. They are made easy by an unshakable confidence in God's faithfulness in his wise leading. We all have rivers to cross to get there. Our crossings may involve our work, our relationships, our family. Our crossings may be a difficult decision we need to make. In these transitional moments of life, we may be gripped by fear. But singing, I know longer am a slave to fear is only helpful if we have a firm foundation upon which we have built our confidence and hope. Keeping our fears in check and trusting God in faith is what is required. What rivers are you needing to cross? For many, taking steps of faith and obedience in the midst of seemingly uncrossable circumstances is difficult. Yet it is when we step out in faith that we see the hand of God guiding us. Every step of faith, however, involves some lack of full understanding of what may lie ahead. That is why it is called walking by faith, not by sight. It is faith that trusts in veracity the object of our faith, 
not in the strength of our faith. We grow in our faith as we heed these words of Joshua. And again, these words would be, incidentally, words that Moses, before his death, would share directly with Joshua, as recorded in Deuteronomy 34. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, you shall... Meditate, however, on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will be, you will make your way prosperous, and that then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? He says this again, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And the connecting in prayer part of this chapter. God, I am facing a river I need to cross. This is my opportunity to genuinely step out in faith today. Grant me the courage to trust your heart, even if I can't see your hand. Embolden and deepen my trust in you. Place my feet upon the dry ground of your promises. Take me where you want me to go. This is from uh, my book, Connecting the Dots, from this chapter called Faith Crossings. So, a remarkable story. It actually happened. Uh, If you've ever been to Israel and have seen the Jordan River today, it's sort of less than impressive, let's say. But can you imagine stepping across in faith? The priests... The dry ground, the evidence of God's uh, intervention, and of course, uh, God would lead the Israelites to uh, one victory after another. And that's how it works in our faith journey with him in the land. When we entrust our situations and circumstances to him, he is one who is faithful to guide us and direct us in our pathways of life. So with these words, be encouraged, and until next time, Shalom.